This video is brought to you by Audible. Almost a year ago in Las Vegas, Huawei launched the Mate 10 Pro smartphone. And during the announcement, executive director Richard Yu went off script to lament the fact that it wouldn't be sold by U.S. carriers. He said Huawei being banned from U.S. shelves was a tragedy for American consumers, who were thus forced to miss out on a great smartphone. Frankly, I thought that was a bit of a stretch. The Mate 10 Pro had good features, but also many drawbacks, at a price that I felt was pushing it at the time. Well, what a difference a year makes. The Mate 20 Pro costs even more than the Mate 10 Pro, but it's also such a compelling product that it really is a shame it won't be coming to America. From the launch event in London, I'm Mr. Mobile, and this, uh, this is probably my next phone. First, I want to lay something out. Getting early access to the Mate 20 Pro has meant a week-long trip to London for a bunch of us media folks. Nice, nice. So it's totally natural for you to ask how much of my enthusiasm is related to that free trip. But the reality is, this is one of the busiest smartphone seasons I've ever seen, and I said no to this trip twice because of that. It was only once Huawei briefed me on this phone in New York that I saw just how impressive the device is, and I asked for more time with it so I could film it properly. Well, coming to London was the best way to do that, even though it meant pushing back some of my other videos on the schedule and producing a lot of content in suboptimal conditions. This ain't no vacation, folks. So why is the Mate 20 Pro worth all the hassle? Well, let's start with the battery. It's 5% larger than last year's already huge pack in the Mate 10 Pro, still one of the longest lasting phones I've ever used. It comes with a 40 watt supercharger in the box that shoots it from 0 to 70% in a half an hour. Where last year's glass back was just an opportunity to scratch your phone up, this year it's justified. Huawei has finally given us wireless charging. And if that's not enough to stoke your chi, you can flip a switch in the settings to reverse that wireless charging. Yes, that means your phone becomes a charging pad for another phone. Inefficient? Yes. Huge gimmick? You bet. But you've got to admit, it's also pretty awesome. Also awesome? The potential of the three cameras on the back. This is a similar arrangement to Huawei's P20 Pro. The primary camera is a 40 megapixel sensor, which uses pixel binning to enable night shots that you just can't get from any other phone. Next to that, a 3x telephoto zoom with optical stabilization for long distance captures. And next to that is something new for Huawei. The company's usual monochrome sensor has been swapped out for a camera with an ultra wide lens. This is the thing I've been begging manufacturers to adopt ever since LG hooked me on it years ago. It opens up so many options for photography, and I'm very eager to try it in concert with Huawei's night mode. I'll be taking a lot of sample photos with this phone this week. Make sure you're following me on Instagram so you can get an early taste of what it's capable of. In less awesome news for some of you, the 2K OLED screen is topped off by a notch and bottomed out by a small chin. The notch isn't just there for the selfie camera, as on so many phones, but also for Huawei's new face scanning hardware, which should make face unlock more secure than on Android phones that only use the camera. If you're like me and you prefer a fingerprint sensor, you've got that too. No, not on the back. No, not below the display, but beneath it. This is the first phone I'll be using with an optical fingerprint sensor built into the screen. And while I can already tell you it's not as fast or accurate as a traditional one, I love that it's made it possible to have the same size bezels above and below the screen. And while we're talking about looks, all this stuff is packed into a much sleeker chassis than last year's. It's available in five colors, including Huawei's trademark Morpho Aurora, <laughs> it's a ridiculous name, but just look at this thing. That said, I do hate how glass picks up fingerprints, and Huawei has a solution there, too. The hyper-optical blue and green trims have a very light texture applied to their glass backs, which makes them more resistant to fingerprints and easier to grip. 
I do wish that finish could have come to the gradient version, but apparently that's easier said than done. I'll wrap up with concerns. But even many of these have mitigating positives hiding underneath. For example, I'm never happy to see Huawei's heavy user interface, but at least it's built on the latest version of Android, which is more than I can say for the last three phones I've covered. Of course, keeping that phone updated over the next two or three years, well, that's another story. Also, this phone takes the unusual step of adding a new storage card format, nano memory, basically a micro SD card, but in the shape of a nano SIM. It's probably gonna be tough to find these cards for a while, but it's better than not having any expandable storage at all, which has been the case up till now. I guess that just leaves the lack of a headphone jack, which itself is softened somewhat by the adapter included in the box. The biggest worry I have is, of course, the price. Huawei wouldn't spill that detail before this video was completed, but well, let's have a little fun with it. If you stick with me through this quick break, I'll tell you what I would pay for the Mate 20 Pro. And speaking of great mates, for those who stay mobile, this video is brought to you by Audible. And with all the traveling I do, sometimes it's more convenient to take in books through my ears instead of my eyes. And lately, I've been laughing my way through Riding Rockets, an astronaut's autobiography that's as hilarious as it is harrowing. And just try the free sample if you don't believe me. And if you like it, you can get it for free. Just visit audible.com slash Mr. Mobile or text Mr. Mobile to 500, 500 Audible members get a credit for a free book every month. And if you don't like a particular book, you just exchange it. No questions asked. And now members also get two Audible Originals monthly, too. Wouldn't it be great if we all just listened more? Try Audible free for a month and claim your free book. Go to audible.com slash M-R-M-O-B-I-L-E or text the word Mr. Mobile to 500-500. And thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. I'll cut right to it. If Huawei came out and said the Mate 20 Pro costs a thousand bucks, I'd say there's a good chance it'll be worth it. Now look, as a rule, I don't think four-figure smartphones are justified. In fact, I've only said that about one other phone, the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. But if the Mate 20 Pro delivers on its promises, it will bring almost everything the Note 9 does, except the S Pen. And it'll probably beat the Samsung in battery life and low light shooting. That said, competition is stiff, with the feature-packed Razer phone and Google's excellent Pixel 3 both at $799 and a OnePlus 6T expected soon for potentially much less. I'll take all of those into account when I give the Mate 20 Pro the full review treatment soon, and I won't be pulling any punches because I mean it when I say this could be the next phone to live in my second pocket. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss that review, and be sure and take a look at Android Central's coverage as well. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.